So, what is the main thing you need to know how to do for a Monte Carlo based simulation model? Well, I'll show you what to expect. Welcome to Sports Betting Truth, where it is my goal to give you actual sports betting advice without the touting, shilling, hype, or false promises. Now, today we're going to do another introductory level video about expectation. Now, expectation is the core principle of a Monte Carlo simulation. A Monte Carlo simulation is where you simulate something a set number of times to introduce randomness into the equation, but the more you run the simulation, the more things will normalize and show what you can expect over the long run. A good example of a Monte Carlo simulation would be simulating a baseball game 10,000 times. Out of those 10,000 simulations, all the randomness would be ironed out and you would get a general expectation on what to expect in the long run. What you're really trying to measure with a Monte Carlo simulation is, if this game was played an infinite number of times, what would the average result be? That's the concept of a Monte Carlo simulation, as opposed to a linear regression model where it's simply an equation, or a power ranking model where you're just measuring the differences between two teams. In a Monte Carlo simulation, you're attempting to predict things based on trials. Expectation is the core of a Monte Carlo simulation. You're trying to measure what to expect in terms of percentages. So let's get into it. So right here I have 2018-2019 college basketball stats for the season using stats that matter for this example. So I did another video about adjusting stats over here and I used these two games to illustrate my point. I'm going to use them again here. On March 15th, Florida State played Virginia in the ACC tournament and Florida State scored 69 points on 58.2 possessions for an offensive efficiency of 118.567. Virginia scored 59 points on 58.2 possessions, and therefore their offensive efficiency was 101. Buffalo and Ohio. Ohio scored 67 points on 80.7 possessions for an offensive efficiency of 83.02. Buffalo's was 141 because they scored 114 on 80.7. If these teams were going to play again in the same exact situation, what could we expect? That's what we're trying to answer with expectation. It's really not that hard to calculate on a base level. So the first thing you want to do is calculate what the league average is for the stat you're trying to measure expectation for. So for this example, we're trying to measure efficiency. The league average efficiency for both offense and defense this year was 106.0075. So what you want to do is calculate the differentials. The differentials is basically calculating their season efficiency minus the league average. So here are the season efficiencies right here. Florida State's offensive efficiency for the season, unadjusted, was 108.4031. Defense was 97.21462. So compared to the league average, Florida State's offensive efficiency was 2.39 points above the league average. Virginia was 12 points above. Ohio was almost 7 points below and Buffalo is 9.38 points above. That's for offense, and then for defense, negative is better. Everybody's in the negative here, but Virginia, of course, is the lowest. They had one of the best defenses in the country, so it's no surprise. All right, now that we have these differentials measured, we're gonna calculate the expectation. So it's really not that hard. So the next step, what you wanna do is merge the deltas. So we're gonna merge Florida's offensive delta, which is at W5, 2.39, plus Virginia's defensive delta, which is at x6 minus 13.11, which we get minus 10.72. We're going to do the same on the opposite, w6 plus x5 for Virginia's delta. And now we're going to do Ohio's delta, w9 plus x10. and then Buffalo's delta, W10 plus X9. So now we have all these deltas right here. And now all I have to do with the deltas is add it to the league average. Which in this case is T2 106.0075 plus Z5 minus 10.72. And we can expect based on these stats, if Florida State were to play Virginia again, their expected offensive efficiency for the game would be 95.28515 per 100 possessions. And the same with Virginia, same with Ohio, and the same with, the same with Buffalo. So the 
defensive efficiencies are going to be the flip side. So just put them over here. Put them over here. And we can do the same thing for tempo. Now the league average tempo last year was 67.76. So what if we wanted to calculate tempo expectation as well? Well, I have every team's tempos from last year as well right here. And now we can calculate the expected tempo if they were to play again, instead of just assuming they're gonna play at the same pace the next time they played. It's the same concept. You calculate the deltas, AG5 minus T1. So if Florida State played faster than the league average. To no surprise, Virginia played a lot slower than the league average. Ohio and Buffalo both played faster than the league average. So we got the deltas in there, and now we're gonna combine the two deltas. And now we're just gonna add these two numbers to the league average. So if Florida State and Virginia were to play again, hypothetically, they would play a 60.23 possession game, which is higher than what they played in the ACC tournament. Ohio and Buffalo would be expected to play a 75 possession game, which would be lower than what they played on February 19th. The good thing about expectation is that after the fact, you can compare the expectation to reality to see if a team overachieved or underachieved, which can be another factor in whatever model you're trying to use to predict going forward. So now that we have the expectations of offense and defense, as well as tempo, we can kind of predict a final score if these two teams were to play again. This is a very elementary way of predicting, but it's better than nothing at all. So what we would do is Florida State Whoops, I keep typing Florida. So what we would do is Florida State, Virginia, a reasonable guess if these teams were to play again would be Florida State's expected efficiency of 95 right here, slash 100 times the expected tempo right here. We could expect Florida State to score 57.39 points if they were to play Virginia again but they scored 69 points in the last game, so they overachieved big time. And we could expect Virginia's score to be 65 if they were to play again. So this would be a good reasonable estimate that Virginia would win by about eight and a half points if they were to play again. And if Ohio and Buffalo were to play again, same thing. Ohio's expected efficiency divided by 100 times the expected tempo of 75 Ohio would be expected to score 67 points, which is exactly what they scored last time. Buffalo would be expected to score 85 points this time. Not near as good as the 114 point output they had on February 19th, but that's the point of expectations. The 114 was probably an outlier. Expectation is if they were to do it an infinite number of times, what would the average result be? 114 is an outlier. The point of expectation is to get rid of outliers. That's the whole point of running the trials over and over again. If you ran the trial once, chances are you get an outlier. The whole point of running the trial multiple times is to smooth things out. Also, I want to point out that none of these expectations factor in home advantage. Now, Florida State and Virginia played on a neutral floor, but this game right here was played on Buffalo's home floor, so I didn't factor in home advantage here. That's something you can calculate on the side. Basically, to calculate home advantage for efficiency, you would just take every team's away stats and every team's home stats and find the difference. Let's just assume here that home advantage is worth 2% on each side of the equation, right? So we're going to take these expected efficiencies here for Ohio and Buffalo and add 2% to each side. So we're going to subtract 2% from Buffalo's expected efficiency, and we're going to add... 2% to Buffalo's expected efficiency and vice versa. So now we can use our new numbers. We're going to use AE, AE9 divided by 100, AE10. So basically that 2% home advantage we just factored in only raised each team's score by about one or minus one point 
six. So not that much of a deal. But again, home advantage is another factor that you can calculate. Again, there is no limits here. You can do whatever you want. The more granular you want to be, the better. But generally over time, home advantage on average for every team in the country will usually be somewhere around that 2% range. Anyway, that's the basics of expectation. It's really not that difficult, but you wanna use this in a Monte Carlo simulation or to just make general estimations like we did here. We didn't use a Monte Carlo simulation to project these scores right here. We just use a simple equation based on expectation. So for a Monte Carlo simulation, what you'd wanna do is convert these things into percentages, and that way you can do a bunch of trials introducing randomness in there. But how to convert these into percentages is another video for another time. This is just base level expectation right here. I hope you found this video helpful. Again, this was a very basic level video, a very elementary video intended to introduce a very basic level of expectation to you guys. So going forward, I do plan on making more of these educational videos when it comes to stuff like this. So stay tuned. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button and the like button, and you'll see my new uploads come when they're available. I do plan on making more of these. Stay tuned. Anyway, until next time, this is Sports Betting Truth signing off.